is the Labour MP Richard Burgeon, who is one of Mr Corbyn's supporters. Very good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Uh, is Jeremy Corbyn struggling to get the party to rally around him and, and toe his line, or will he give them a free vote and let them think? Well, let's start off by saying that uh, disagreements within the Parliamentary Labour Party on foreign policy, on military issues, are nothing new. I remember when 139 Labour MPs broke the whip after Tony Blair, with no consultation with the Labour Party members, with no consultation with the Labour MPs, ordered Labour MPs to vote for the disastrous uh, and uh, illegal war in Iraq. It's the way you deal with that, though, isn't it? The, the way it's handled. I'm um, just talking to John Woodcock there, and on radio he was saying the way we conduct ourselves within the disagreements on policy is really important, and he described the last week as shambolic. I think the key thing is, the key issue before us is the most serious decision any MP in any parliament can make, whether or not to agree to send UK military personnel uh, into conflict, into war. So the Westminster who's up, who's down business doesn't interest me or the public too much, but the fact we've got to accept is that many of the people attacking Jeremy Corbyn got it gravely wrong on Iraq. Many of the people attacking Jeremy Corbyn got it gravely wrong on Libya. Jeremy Corbyn got it correct on Iraq, Jeremy Corbyn got it correct on Libya, and I do believe if we ask ourselves the question of whether or not the UK bombing in Syria is in the interest of the Syrian people, in the interest of the wider region, and in the interest of British security, I think Jeremy Corbyn's got it correct again. So you're going to vote against it? I will be voting against the UK uh, bombing Syria. That's not because I'm a pacifist, far from it. It's because if I ask myself this question, uh, do I believe that the unforgivable atrocity that occurred in Paris last week or the unforgivable atrocity that occurred in Tunisia early this year, do I believe that one country bombing a third country could stop murderist terrorist lunatics in a second country walking into a concert hall, a cinema, uh, a beach or a tourist resort and shooting people and murdering people, then no, I don't believe it could. Is it better, though, just playing devil's advocate to do nothing? It's, we're not talking about doing nothing. I believe if the UK starts bombing Syria, that will play into the hands of ISIL. It will play into the hands of the terrorists, because then a murderous group of extremists who carried out that atrocity in Paris will have forced the hand and shaped the foreign and military policy of big powers like France and big powers like the UK. And it will help them feed the narrative that the West is in a crusade against uh, the Muslim world. ISIS, ISIL do need, do need to be militarily defeated, mm. but I don't think that it's UK planes or UK boots on the ground that will be most effective in that. I believe that it's troops in that region and people in that region that can provide the military solution to this okay. problem.